Welcome to Passion Church. For more information about Passion Church, please visit us online at www.passionchurch.tv. Now let's join the service already in progress. Well, good morning. How are y'all doing? Doing well? Well, my name is Andrew. I am the student minister here. If you don't know who I am, me and my wife, Jess, we run our, our, our middle school and high school students, and we love that. We love being able to pour into students and help point them to their purpose in Jesus. And so today we get to join in together, and we've been in this series. In the first week, Pastor Steve talked with us about Red Rover, how we have to be able to set up boundaries in our relationships with our friendships, how, how we, have, we give equal love, but we don't give equal access. That was something that has been said. And, and last week, Pastor Steve talked about balance, and, and we played Twister. I mean, guys, did anybody go home and break out the Twister mat and start playing it with your family? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody. I didn't either. But um, my son, if I fell on him, it would be detrimental. (laughs) So we talked about Twister having balance in our relationships. We have to learn to balance solitude, which is being alone with God, with being with our friends so we will know who our friends are, but also we will know and have wisdom to know who our assignments are and to be able to differentiate between the two. And some of the best games that we played when we were younger are some of the games that didn't require you to go to the store and buy a board, didn't require you to do a lot of setup, right? The games that, that we can even now play as adults, and it's just as much fun. And the game that I'm talking about today is charades. How many of you guys have some memories of some exciting charade games? I remember as a kid playing with my siblings. I have three siblings. And um, we did not play charades like most normal people do. You know, most normal people, they have like things they write down on paper and they put it in a hat. And you have to like draw out a hat and then you have to act that out. We couldn't do that because we knew each other way too well, and we would, we, would, we would just know, like, as soon as we opened up and started doing, so I remember, because I wrote that or something, so we had to just go off top of our head, and it got, it got weird, okay? It got weird. I, I'm not going to tell you all the stories, because, because some of them you just wouldn't understand, honestly, but also it's just, you're like, how did your mind get there? How old were you when you played this game? I was like, but it, it, that's just how it was. We were, our imagination just ran wild because we did not leave it to the boundaries. And, and the game of charades had been repackaged and rebranded with a lot of different ways, reimagined in a lot of different ways. And, and we love it. How many of you guys have loved playing games, not just charades, but games like charades? Who, is there someone that's really good at charades with, that would want to come and 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 play? Do I have a volunteer? <laughs> nobody. Nobody. James, come on. I saw you. You perked up. You perked up. Come on. Come on. All right. So I have, I have some, some pre-written cards, you know, for, for everybody. So I'm going to have you read through them and you're going to have 10 seconds to act it out. And then you guys just, just let us have it, right? Whatever you think it is, just shout it out. And then you ready? So there's first one. Yeah, that's the first one. Ready? Go. There we go. All right. Wow, we didn't even need the timer for that one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. I heard it. Bull rider. Bull rider. All right, last one. Last one. <laughs> that one is Christian. Christian. Man, man, you guys didn't get that. Give it up for James. A lot of us in here probably heard this wise, wise proverb. Um, you can sit inside a garage and go vroom, vroom, but it doesn't mean that you're a sports car. How many of you guys have ever heard that? I always think of some old guy just sitting in a chair. Going, 
like, just pretending that he was a sports car. But you can do that all you want to, but it doesn't make you a sports car. No more than walking into a hospital dressed as a doctor, wearing all the things. If, if, if that's you and you're acting like you're a doctor, but you're really not, there's no way that I'm going to let you operate on me. Right? Because you, you, could, you could dress like one and, and do all that, but it doesn't make it true. But we still do it. We play charades. We, we, we sing songs. Even, even this morning, we sing this song. We can sing, I love you so much. We can sing to God, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. And, and you know, if you're married or if you've been in a relationship long enough, there comes a time when you have to say more than, than that, right? Because I, I remember saying it to my wife. I, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to get some brownie boards. I'm going to just walk in and say I love you. They're like, babe, I love you. Then one time she's like, why do you say that? <laughs> right? She goes, she goes, why? Why? And then I was like, oh, man, I wasn't ready with the why. <laughs> you know, and, and us guys, we're quick on the feet. It's like, oh, babe, there's just so many things. It's just, it's so hard to list it out, right? But, but for real, if it comes from a place that's true, we can say we love you, but then when it gets to the question, the why, it's like, oh, man, babe, because... You are so amazing. I've watched you live your life, and even in the middle of hard times, you've always kept your faith. You, even whenever I'm so hard to be around, you deal with me, and you're patient with me. You're patient with our kids. You're such a great mom. You're such a great wife, and you've been learning to cook and, and making me all such, right? If you know the why, it's easy to put it, but sometimes when we're faking, we, we can say, God, I love you, but it's really all just for show. It's all just for show. It doesn't, it doesn't come from anywhere. It's just like, oh, everyone else is saying it, so I need to say it. It's really easy to tell someone that you're a Christian, but not really live it out. Right? It's easy to put it on Facebook. It's easy to, to, to repost, to reshare. It's easy to do that. Because that, that's just a click of the button. It doesn't, it doesn't require any life change. It's easy to come on Sunday, go through the motions, and then go home. It's easy to tell somebody, yeah, 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 I'll pray for you, and then walk away and never do it. I've done that before, right? To walk away and never do it and forget about it. You see them at, see them in Walmart, like, oh, my goodness, I'm supposed to be praying for them, and I wasn't praying for them. It's easy to go through the motions. It's easy to put on the show. It's easy to play charades. I can also tell you this, that we may be playing charades and not really be aware of it. There's a portion in Scripture in, in Matthew. It's called, the, it's three chapters, Matthew 5 through Matthew 7. It's talking to, it's, we've called it the Sermon on the Mount. It's Jesus giving this long message talking about Christian life, talking about how we should live, things to watch out for. And so we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 7 this morning, but I want to back up and just give, just give brief statements about, verse, about chapters 5 and 6. And I encourage you that if you haven't read the Sermon of the Mount, I want, I want you to go back, put it on your to-do list to do this week, say, hey, read Matthew 5 through seven read the whole thing because those are all words coming from Jesus's mouth okay and it's really important I think and I think as we look at relationships these three chapters are full of how God how Jesus has instructed us in ways that we can have relationship with each other and relationship with the father it's a full instructions on the basics of walking out the Christian life privately and publicly as well as individually and corporately. In chapter five, Jesus talks about our hearts and he challenges us to look at what our hearts, what's the motive of we're doing the things that we do. Because if our hearts are in the right place, then our actions will follow. If our hearts are not in the wrong place, then everything just comes out hollow. I didn't mean that to rhyme, but it did. <laughs> Jesus knew that that was important, that our hearts are important. He was trying to facilitate, was trying to um, tell us that. And in chapter six, Jesus places value on the things done in private and in solitude. 
that ring a bell from last week? He talks about things that are done in solitude, how to, how to fast, how to give, and all of these things. If, if, if you don't do it privately and you're only doing it in front of people, then there's a good chance that you're playing charades. Right? Why would I be acting like I'm a doctor by myself if I wasn't really a doctor? But if I was in front of people playing charades, I would act like a doctor all the time. So if, if you ever find yourself like, man, I only want to do this when I'm in front of people, but when I'm at home alone, I don't want to sing these songs. I don't want to get down on my knees and pray. I don't want to read my Bible. If you're not doing it privately, then there's a good chance that what you're doing publicly is just a show. And we're going to pick up in chapter 7, like I said. If our hearts long for Jesus and the things of him, then our actions will prove it. If our hearts are only worried about ourselves, then our actions will prove that as well. And if we start doing things for show, then that's an identifier that our heart isn't right. So let's talk about it. Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 15. Be on your guard against false prophets prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. Yeesh. You'll recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. Makes sense. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, neither can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. So you'll recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will, the ki- will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Drive out demons in your name and do many miracles in your name. Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Hold on. I'm going to read that last part again. Because I think it's something that, that doesn't automatically resonate the first time. Many on that day, the day that we meet God, the day that we are are, are called up to glory, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we drive out demons in your name? Didn't we do miracles in your name? They were doing stuff. When's the last time that you drove out a demon? Right? When's the last time that you saw a miracle happen? Jesus is saying that on that day that people who have seen that happen and have done those things will cry out, Lord, Lord, but he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. What does that mean? What does that point to? What, what, what is he talking about here? For me, I read it the first time thinking that, yeah, I, I just can't listen to any preacher, right? I gotta, I gotta make sure that they're not just out here blowing smoke, but it's real, that, they're, that, they're, that it's coming from a place that's true. And that is true. We need to make sure that we aren't just listening to anybody that comes to speak in our lives, but we have to know that it's not just the preacher's There's a lot of people that we let come and prophesy into our life. There's a lot of things that we that that come and and we give them access to our hearts to speak into our hearts, both people with skin on and and other devices. Bro, 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 you got to read this book. I mean, I read this book the other day and I'm telling you telling you it will change your life. You read this book, next month, you're going to be a millionaire. I promise. You're going to be a million. I promise you read this book, right? All you got to do, all you got to do is work hard every day for, 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 for 90 hours a week. You got to stop going to church because Sunday, that's the day that you need to do. You got to stop doing all, you got to, hey, all the date nights with your family, you're just going to have to put that on pause for a little bit. 
I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like good fruit to me. That doesn't sound like a good tree. But we'd be like, oh man, I, I need that success and that sounds good. I, I, I wanna see those results, but that's, that's the wrong fruit. That's not good fruit, that's bad fruit. Oh man, hey man, you, your wife, you, you guys aren't on the same page. She's not listening to you. Okay, it's okay, just ignore it. It'll get better. Just ignore it. It'll get better. Just go do your own thing and it'll work itself out. Hey, man, how's that working out for you? Oh, man. I mean, we're, we're close, though. We're close. Right? Oh, man, you stressed out at work? Come on. Come with me. Let's go get a drink. Let's go get high. And we'll forget about this and tomorrow's a new day. It'll be better. Really? We see someone on YouTube or we see someone on TV talking about how something changed their life and now we want that. We need that. We need to know that this applies to everything. It comes dressed like a sheep, but on the inside, there's dead. It may come dressed as like, hey, this will give you peace. Hey, this will give you provision. Hey, this will give you what you want. But on the inside, it's a ravenous wolf. And I think we can't separate these two portions of scripture for talking about the fruit because Jesus was talking about, hey, you got to watch your fruit. And then, and then he goes into saying like, many will come to me on the day to think that they were good. But I'll say I never knew them. How is that so? But we have to look at our fruit because we all have fruit. We all do. It's either good or it's bad. There's no middle ground. You may think, you know what, man, hey, I'm just here doing my life. I'm just going to do my thing. I'm not going to make any waves. I just want to come and go, right? I don't need to. It's either good or bad. You may think like, hey, man, I'm not producing any fruit. I'm just going to chill. But even Jesus, when he came up on the fig tree and he saw that there were no figs, what did he do to the fig tree? He cursed it. No fruit is bad fruit. There's no faking our fruit either. You can promise me apple after apple, but if you're a thorn bush, you can dress it up all you want to, and I'm not gonna get an apple as soon as I bite into it. You can try your hardest to sell it to me, but there's no good fruit that will come from cheating on your husband, that will come from cheating on your wife. Like, oh, you don't know, man, they don't love me. Well, I don't love them. We just decided to just go our separate ways and just live our lives, right? There's no good fruit that will come from that. So, hey, man, this is the only way we make it. She lets me just go and do my thing. Like, no. There's no good fruit that will come from that. You can tell yourself that the weed, that the pictures on your phone, the secret bank account, are, uh, they're, they're good because it keeps things from getting worse. It's like, oh man, I can look at this on my phone. It's not like I'm actually doing it. There's no good fruit that will come from that tree. There's no good fruit that will come from keeping that secret. There's no good fruit that will come from the peace that you think you get from a substance if it's not God. It's not. I promise you that's a bad tree and it will only produce bad fruit. We have to realize that we all produce fruit and, and our fruit is intended not for ourselves. Our fruit is in, how, how many times do you see an apple tree be like, oh man, that's a nice apple. <laughs> yeah. I just, mm. No. Your, your fruit is not for yourself. Your fruit is for the people around you. And you can say all you want, like, man, I, I'm, I got this under control. I got, they, they don't know. They don't know. I'm going to come to church and I'm going to sing. I might even cry. I'm going to get down on my knees. I'm going to do stuff. But, but on Monday, I'm going to go back and do what I've been doing. Yeah, I know I need to stop, but, but it's hard. It's easier for me to do that. I'm not, I'm not hurting anybody. That's bad fruit. 
You may think you're not hurting anybody, but, but there are people that God has called you to, but you, you are putting up a wall keeping you from reaching them. So you may not see anybody right now that you're hurting, but you have fruit that God has placed in you for them. But until you get your roots right, until you get it right to where he's like, God, I'm giving you everything. I want you to, to recreate me. The fruit that you could be producing to help people is stopped. Because we're too busy putting on a show, not letting God come and actually change our lives. He's warning us to check their fruit, but he's also warning us to check our fruit. We have to be able to identify fruit. We have to. We have to be able to identify, is that a good fruit or is that a bad fruit? Some of it is easier than others. But we have to realize that we can't just look at fruit based on what we see on Sunday mornings. I know this because I lived it. I was the one that served in my youth group on a regular basis. Every Wednesday, I was playing the bass. I would sing sometimes. I would get there early. I would go to the youth events. I would do those things. But when I went to school, you would not think that that was the same person. It got to the point where I asked my best friends, like, hey, man, if you didn't know me, would you think that I was someone that went to church? He's like, nah, man. I was like, oh, really? I thought that I was good. I thought it didn't matter. And then I would go and I would tell people, be like, yeah, man, I'm going to church. They're like, wait, you go to church? It's like, yeah, I go to church. I go to church every week. I play the bass in my church. Like, you do? I didn't know that. You know, you think that no one's eating your fruit, but people are eating your fruit. I was out there giving bad fruit, but but on Sunday, I would show up and everybody would be like, oh man, you're such a good kid. Man, you're so polite. You're so respectable. Like, you you never say anything. I I, I never have any problems with you. I was playing charades. It's easy, and sadly, it's acceptable for us to give one-word answers while we're here. We ask someone, hey, how you doing? We say, I'm fine, and we move on. How's the family going? Oh, we're good, and we move on. You need anything? No. Day's over, let's go home, eat some food, wake up on Monday, and start the week over. See, in verse 21 of chapter 7, Jesus makes a statement that proves that we can come into this building and put on a show for people and it not be enough. Not all of it. Not, not if this is all that it is. If, this is. if what we do on Sunday is the only Christian walk that we have, then I would say that you are in danger of being one that says, I, I, Lord, Lord, I showed up every Sunday Lord, Lord, I I, I came and I served every Sunday. Lord, I gave you tithe every week. Lord, I, I, I came down front and I laid hands and I prayed on people. Lord, I even counseled people while I was here on Sunday. I never knew you. I never knew you. It's more than one day a week. The sign of devotion to Jesus is knowing him and doing his will. He says that. He says it in verse verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father in heaven. And when I think about it, Jesus' will, when he was here on earth, he says, I do the will of my Father. Where my Father goes, I go. The whole purpose for Jesus coming was to be love and to save the lost. That was his purpose. That was what Jesus was all about. The, The healing, 
the casting out demons, the, set, the, the setting people free, all of that was a byproduct of what he really was trying to do. And that was bringing forgiveness of sins and redeeming our lost souls. How many times do we see this in scripture when Jesus would heal someone? He would say, be healed, go and sin no more. The man, the, 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 the paralyzed man that was brought down through the roof, he thought he was getting his healing, but God said, hey, your sins are forgiven first. And then get up and walk. The main thing is our lost souls being led to Jesus. If we forget that, then are we really doing his will? Or are we just trying to create Are we just trying to say, you know what, man? I showed up, I sang my song, now I'm gonna go live my life. I know this isn't like a get up and shout and all these things, but it's something that really, it's, it's, it's humbling, it's sobering, and it opens up my eyes. But like, man, when I get to the end, I wanna make sure that I, there is no chance, that there is no chance that, that he will look at me and say, I never knew you. But he'll look at me and say, well done good and faithful servant. You did the will of my father. That's what I want. Yes, Jesus was about healing. Yes, Jesus was about casting out demons. Yes, Jesus was about these things. But it was all to point people to the father so they will have forgiveness of their sins and lost sheep will be found. This has been emphasized in my life over the last few months. Um, and if I'm honest, it's really easy for me to get into the show part rather than the real. It's really easy for me. It's easy for me to, to, to read my Bible because I'm preparing a sermon. It's really easy for me to read my Bible because I'm about to go uh, and, and, and talk to someone, to go d give a demo devotion. It's really easy for me to do that instead of just like, God, what do you want me to do right now for you? For, like, that's not just for show, not just for me to give a message, but it's real. And if I'm, and if I'm honest, if I don't have people in my life that will come and tell me like, hey, I just want to make sure that you're doing all right because something seems off. I just want to make sure you're doing all right because I don't, I, 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 something seems, I need some people in my life that will check me. Because if I don't, then I could find myself playing charades and not even know it. I'm thankful for my wife because she checks me. She does. Just like when I say, hey, I love you, babe. She's like, really, why? She checks me. Say, hey, babe, I hadn't seen you open up your Bible. I haven't seen you, haven't seen you wake up early. I haven't seen you do these things. It's like, babe, I know. I know. Thank you. Game recognizes game. You see, if you don't have people in your life that you can trust, I would say you need to do that. You need to do that. It may sound like a broken record. It may, you, you're probably going to hear this at least two more times before this series is over. You need to have people in your life that you, can, that you trust that can speak into your life. Because when someone that I trust speaks into my life, say, hey, how are you? Are you reaching the lost? Do you even think about it? When they say that, it's like, man, I need to realign my focus. Because I'm not trying to just build a ministry. I'm trying to build the kingdom. Game recognized game. So what does all of this that I've been talking about have to do with relationships? And it, and it, and I, and it does. Earlier in, in chapter 7, Jesus talks about do not judge 
so that you won't be judged. You guys know that, right? Y'all act like y'all don't know that one. We love that scripture, right? We love that, hey, man, man, don't judge me. Don't judge, lest you be judged, right? We say that because we really say that because we want to keep people out of our business. But we have to graduate to a place where we stop putting on a show and we let some people in with some good fruit that can call out our bad fruit. Matthew chapter seven, we skip down to verse three. Why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye but don't notice the beam of wood in your own eye? Well, how can you say to your brother, let me take the splinter out of your eye and look, there's a beam of wood in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, take the beam of wood out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Have you ever tried to get something out of your eye on your own? It's hard. Right? James, come here. I'm going to use you again. You see, if I had something that was in my eye right now, I could even get a mirror and I could be like this, try to get it out, but it'd be hard for me to like actually focus and see, but it's a lot easier. It's like, hey, James, I got something in my eye. Can you see it? Come on, work. <laughs> James, I got something in my eye. Do you see it? Yes. Can, can you help me get it out, right? Um, sure. It's a lot easier when somebody... When somebody else in our life is able to look into our eye and be like, hey man, yeah, you got something in your eye. But we we skip this step. We have to get our game right before we can try to get someone else's game right. But a lot of times we think, hey, I can get my game right on my own. If we're honest, that's how we read that. We read this scripture thinking like, yeah, I can't just, I can't just go and, and look at them. I got to look at my own life. But the truth is we can't just look at our own life. Because if, we, if we've been playing charades and we look at our own life, we think we're good. You don't know what you don't know. We have blind spots. See, I realize that we probably still won't see what is stuck in our eye if we do it on our own. Unless we had a brother like James, man, something just feels off, man. I I can't see anything, but something hurts. Something isn't right. Is there something in my eye? Can you help me get it out? Thank you. You can sit down. But if we don't have that, then we can try and we can rub our eyes red trying to get something out of our eye on our own and we're just going to end up frustrated and it's going to be harder to see straight right have you been there it's going to be harder to see straight I've been trying to get this out of my eye on my own and then you see someone else struggling like you're frustrated because you're struggling and you see them like hey man why won't you get it right we're not helping anybody You see, this is why God is God and we're not God. Jesus knew that this order was important. For us to get what was in our eye, we needed someone else to look in it. And then in turn, he said, he put it right there. He said it. In verse five, first take the beam of wood out of your eye and then you will see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Because it's not, don't judge It's like, hey, make sure that your game is right first and then go help your brother. Go help your brother. That means you have to have someone that helps you. It's this cycle. But some of us are playing charades because it's easy. Hey, man, I don't wanna wanna go to to that circle. I don't want to serve on that team because people ask me how I'm doing all the time and they want to know. So we end up not serving in community. We end up not having friends that are close, keeping everybody at a distance because we like playing charades. It's easy. And 
And so, I, 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 so we want the people around us like, how you doing? Fine. And they're fine with that. But I, I think it's time that some people in the body of Christ move away from just saying, hey, how are you doing? And accepting fine. But when we say, hey man, how are you doing? We say fine. It's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's going on? I have some people that, that hey, I know that I see you on Sunday, but I want to I hang out with you during the week. Because when we do that, we start to see people's fruit. We start to see people where they really are. And we say, hey man, I've noticed. I've noticed some things and I want to help you. Will you let me? We have to get to that place. But it's only when we stop playing charades. If we continue playing charades in our relationships, then everything we do becomes a show. And that's not what God wants. God wants us to give it all to him. And he wants us to do his will. When we, and when we do that, when we start walking out his will, we will see souls get saved. We will see miracles happen. We will see people be set free. We'll see the, the community of Bethany start to change because people have decided it's no longer just a show. It's no longer just a show, but this is real. Amen. Father, I thank you for who you are and I thank you for this opportunity that we get to come together. God, I just pray that right now that your Holy Spirit is convicting our hearts where we may be living lives like a show. But you will help us realize, you know what, I, I, I've been doing this thing and I've just been going through the motions and I need to get this right. I just pray that right now you are even opening our eyes to people that we trust, people that have good fruit, that we can allow into our lives and to allow to speak to us and say, hey man, something doesn't smell right. That fruit doesn't smell right. What's going on? Help us get there. In Jesus' name. This is what I want you to do. I want, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to just ask yourself this question. If I was all by myself, would I do this? Or is this just for show? Ask yourself this question, who do I have? Even when you feel like, hey man, everything is good, who do you have in your life to be like, hey, I need you to just check my eye really quick. Look at your neighbor. Say, check, can, I, can you check my eye real quick? Is there something in it? Check my eye. You need to have somebody, even when you feel like, hey, everything's good, be like, hey, I need you to check my eye. Amen? Amen. It's been a privilege to have you join us for this time of ministry. To find more Passion Church resources or to make a donation online, visit www.passionchurch.tv. Remember, you can't live without passion.